Former Federal Reserve Governor John Exeter once quibbed, quote, the U.S. and world economies are on the threshold of a deflationary crash that will make the 1930s look like a boom. Gold will be the single best investment to own, buy it now while it's still cheap. You know what they say about broken clocks. While perhaps only briefly, broken clocks are still accurate twice a day. So surprise, not surprised at the last week's SD bullion market update that I stumbled upon another insolvency study regarding U.S. banks at the moment. Well, according to this one, the situation is twice as bad as others recently pointed out. So instead of one in four, perhaps the real number is closer to one in two U.S. banks face potential bankruptcy bank runs. Well, the Lord only knows, because once you start making up phony accounting rules post-2008 global financial crisis and claiming bags of trash are worth millions of fiat Fed notes marked to model, well, damn near anything can be hidden on bank balance sheets as if it were somehow valuable. But when redemptions come panic bank running and the tide of liquidity finally and fully pulls out, well, it's then that we're going to find out who's swimming naked. Ambrose Evans Pritchard writing for The Telegraph, the beginning of this month, May 2nd, 2023, wrote, quote, almost half of America's 4,800 banks are already burning through their capital buffers. They may not have to mark all losses to market under U.S. accounting rules, but that does not make them solvent. Somebody will take those losses. Quote, it's spooky. Thousands of banks are underwater, said Professor Amit Siru a banking expert at Stanford University. Quote, let's not pretend that this is just about Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic. A lot of the U.S. banking system is potentially insolvent. The full shock of monetary tightening by the Fed has yet to hit. A great edifice of debt faces a refinancing cliff edge over the next six quarters. Only then will we learn whether the U.S. financial system can safely deflate the excess leverage introduced by extreme monetary stimulus during the pandemic. A Hoover Institute report by Professor Seru and a group of banking experts calculates that more than 2,315 U.S. banks are currently sitting on assets worth less than their liabilities. The market value of their loan portfolio is $2 trillion lower than the stated book value. Of course, the article has this chart that you've already seen, probably before, showing the amount of uh, huge potential net losses from bonds and debt securities that banks are sitting upon. What we have not talked much about here, but everybody I think who's been paying attention knows is still waiting out there is the commercial real estate crisis that has yet to been fully admitted or come upon. So that's just another one of those things that's sitting out there yet to have done its reckoning, but it's out there waiting. When former Federal Reserve Governor John Exeter made this inverse pyramid cartoon in the late 1960s, he did so to point out what a spillover liquidity event back then would look like, cascading down from some of the worst, most questionable asset classes to the base that goes nowhere from time to time also reminds people precisely why it remains the foundation of all finance. That's called official gold bullion reserves. He starts the inverse pyramid by stating, quote, anyone or anything that can't repay debt, all insolvent thrifts. For those who are watching this in 2023, that is old vernacular for all insolvent banks. And as we've just discussed, according to some U.S. bank experts at the moment, that's currently potentially about half of them. I'm not even going to bother with the silly opaque derivative markets and the fiat financialization orgy that has followed from the 1980s until today in 2023. We have so many bubbles that are about to find out what their real value is, most certainly not what they have claimed on paper. What I'm going to remind you of is the hard truth that gold is the bedrock. And to begin this week, we were reminded of that brutal fact by the Dutch Central Bank itself as it published the following confidence-inspiring hype video showing the work involved in moving 31% of her official gold bullion reserves held within her nation's borders. Now stop me if you've ever seen a hype video made by central bankers about confidence-inspiring counterparty risk debt-laden assets on their books. Oh, that's right, they've never done that. And in short order, a Dutch central banker will tell you, and us, partly why. Quote, gold is the ultimate anchor of trust. If the entire financial system collapses, You still have the gold, and the gold retains its value.
At the end of the following clip, the Dutch central banker will tell us frankly and partly why official gold bullion matters. But at the start of this clip, we're going to hear from another gold illiterate reporter who underestimates the current fiat euro value of a central bank 400 ounce gold bar. He's going to miss it by almost half, as they are currently valued around 730,000 fiat euros per 400 ounce gold bar. Proceed, gold illiterate reporter and gruff speaking Dutch central banker. Goud zo'n 4 ton per stuk waard en dan nog munten. Maar in een tijd van elektronisch betalen, waarom hebben we dit nog nodig als land? Goud is dus het ultieme vertrouwensanker. Dus als het hele financiële stelsel instort, dan heb je altijd nog het goud. En het goud blijft zijn waarde houden. En in een financiële crisis weet je nooit of andere dingen, zoals de dollar bijvoorbeeld, of die zijn waarde blijft houden. Maar goud blijft zijn waarde houden. De nieuwe kluis is op een defensieterrein en dus extra goed beveiligd. So there you have it, central bankers of the past and present day, stating the gruff case for having official gold bullion. It is the ultimate system confidence reboot monetary asset after all. Nothing else has ever come close to it in the crisis. Interestingly, of the 200 metric tons or 14,166 400 ounce gold bars moved by armed guards by the Dutch central bank, that accounts for only 31% of their official gold reserves Another 31% of their official gold bullion sits with the New York Federal Reserve. Good luck ever getting that back. And the remaining 38% sits with no gold owning Canada and within the bowels of the seemingly lawless city of London. So all three locations are highly stupid places to keep your sovereign bedrock gold bullion assets. Professor Richard Werner throws even more shade at the situation by stating the Dutch gold now sits on a NATO site and that the Netherlands are basically a U.S. vassal state. Well, we'll see when the stuff starts hitting the structural reset fan what comes of old alliances and offshore gold storage programs. For now, with spot price dips in gold, Commercial Bank UBS has three takes as to why now is a good time to get going long gold. The gold price has come off from its recent high as U.S. President Joe Biden expressed confidence in avoiding a government default amid progress in debt ceiling negotiations better to U.S. data and hawkish comments by some Fed members. At around 1,975 at the time of writing, gold is around 4% lower than the year-to-date high it reached earlier this month. However, the yellow metal remains 8.2% higher since the start of the year, and we think it's likely to break its all-time high later this year with multiple mid- to long-term drivers. Reason 1. Central bank demand should remain robust. Last year marked the 13th consecutive year of net gold purchases by global central banks and the highest level of annual demand on record dating back to 1950. At 1,078 metric tons in 2022, central banks buying of gold more than doubled from 450 metric tons in 2021. And based on Q1 2023 data from the World Gold Council, central banks are on track to buy around 700 metric tons of gold this year, much higher than the average since 2010 of below 500 metric tons. We think this trend of central bank buying is likely to continue amid heightened geopolitical risks and elevated inflation. In fact, the U.S. decision to freeze Russian foreign exchange reserves in the aftermath of the war in Ukraine may have led to a long-term impact on behavior of central banks. UBS uh, also cites broad U.S. dollar weakness supports gold. I would suggest that you might have relative U.S. dollar strength in the short term if we go into a deflationary collapse or some type of recessionary nightmare, you know, situation where relatively the U.S. dollar could strengthen short term and you could see spot price sell offs. And I'm I'm betting on that, actually, in the short to medium term. Uh, they also cite rising U.S. recession risks may prompt safe haven flows. And we're going to get into recession risks and very obvious tells that we are going into recession and or we possibly could be there already. The question is, of course, how bad is it going to be and what kind of nonsense is going to come out of it? We'll get into that in the second half, but uh, first, this brief message. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these Bullion market updates and share it with those who might find the information valuable. Also, be sure to enter our free Monster Box sweepstakes. Want to win 500 Silver Eagle coins just like this guy? Yeah, this is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. This is Dr. Tyler Wall, CEO of SD Bullion. I'm calling to you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a Munster box of 2022 Silver Eagles. Unbelievable. That is awesome. <laughs> so click the link below for your chance to win. Good luck to all of you out there who enter our free 500 ounce American Silver Eagle coin giveaway sweepstakes. The gold and silver market sell off has begun. The question is, how far will it dip? The spot silver price closed the week down at 
2379 bid, just over 24 an ounce ask. The spot gold price fell below its key 2000 support threshold and closed at 1978 an ounce bid. The spot gold silver ratio fell slightly to near 83 to close the week. Now I can see by internal sales data that SD Boeing customers are increasingly and intelligently buying this spot price dip. The question for me at the moment is how far will silver dip as I am going to sell, well actually I sold some silver eagle coins already and I'm planning to arbitrage into lower premium format silver while also going long platinum bullion. Now, a technical analyst that I respect thinks it's likely that we might see spot silver dip back toward 21 an ounce. And of course, I'm only gambling with a small fraction of my bullion portfolio. And given the winds and the trends at the moment, I'm willing to run that risk in thinking that we have further to go on the downside. Now, on the platinum bullion side of things, it's becoming a no-brainer to get long platinum bullion near 1,000 fiat fed notes per troy ounce for the long haul. Deficits of a million ounces in a space of alien precious metals of only a market of some 8 million ounces means in time, platinum's value is going to rise. Of course, the question of what terrible recessionary storm blows our way is the most important thing to consider at the moment. I'm convinced that we are on the threshold of GFC Part 2. So cash and proper bank accounts, physical cash in your house, who knows what could come our way. All that will likely be handy, especially to buy spot price dips if you're going for more bullion. And so I myself, I'm gonna remain patient. Other news, billionaire Stonkholder uh, apparently is not being very patient and he's selling stocks in large volumes via his Berkshire Hathaway account. The Oracle of Omaha tends to nail these things ahead of time. I'm just simply sitting here wondering which failing zombie bank he's going to sweetheart deal into this time around. We also got the played out debt ceiling political clown show to deal with. Hopefully by next month that rerun goes away without default. I mean after all, you can just type into a keyboard what amounts of still dominant global fiat reserve currency you need for the moment. And that's going to work, at least for a while. For those of you who have been on this SD Bullion channel for a while, you know that I like data and I love charts. When executed correctly, they can help foretell our future in varying ways well ahead of time. Well, this chart right here, this one blew me away last week. This 25% red line threshold, the breaking of a smooth six month annualized jobless claim data information. I mean, this is, Look at the data, it runs all the way throughout the full fiat currency era. And once it breaks the 25% threshold, it's never failed in predicting that we have a major recession in the build. Now who out there is naive and or delusional enough not to see that the storms that are out there are about to bear down upon us? I mean, the data is damning. Pass it along. Wake up and take action before it comes. That's all for this week. As always to you out there, take great care of yourselves and those you love. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. To keep getting bullion related news and industry insights, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Finally hit that alert button so you know when we publish fresh content.